Welcome to Building Profitable Relationships, the podcast where we talk with successful entrepreneurs and business owners who have built strong and profitable relationships with their customers, partners, and peers. In our conversations, we explore the heart and science of relationship building in the world of business. Several years ago, I adopted as my personal business mantra, focus on relationships, the money will follow. Now, I firmly believe this to be true. And I found that over the years, as I gave to others and shared freely my experience, my knowledge, without expectation, the rewards came back to me. I am Yvonne A. Jones, your host and founder of the podcast, Building Profitable Relationships. Now, in this episode, I'm going to be considering five principles every business owner must incorporate in their business in order to build those profitable, those lasting relationships. And essentially, those five principles are going to take you beyond the transaction. So transaction is here, building relationship is here. We want to bridge that gap. So the profound words of Harold Janine, who is former president of ITT Corporation, have always resonated with me. And he said, and I quote, in the business world, everyone is paid in two coins, cash, and experience. Take the experience first, the cash will come later. Sounds a little close to what I what I chose as my ethos, my mantra, right? And so perhaps that's why it has resonated with me so well over the years. Now in the context of business, the experience that Mr. Janine mentions is often combined. It's encapsulated in the customer journey. Now, this journey transcends the immediate service or product that we are going to be selling to our customer. And it extends from the moment they come in contact with our business, whether it's on social media, at our website, wherever that may be, from their first encounter with our business or with our brand until the final interaction. The thing about the customer journey, imagine a journey from Florida to New York. There are different mileposts, right? There are different touch points that you're going to, whether it's an Airbnb, you're going to stay at at a motel, you're going to have something at a restaurant, maybe along the way you visit, you do some sightseeing. So compare this to the customer journey. On the customer journey, there are various touch points, and every touch point offers a unique opportunity for us as business owners to cultivate the relationship and shape exceptional customer experiences. Furthermore, each customer interaction is a learning experience for all of us who are in business. And by reflecting on our successes and identifying areas for where we can improve, then we are continuously refining our approach to customer service, thereby enhancing our ability to deliver an amazing or an unparalleled customer experience. Because the thing that we always have to remember is that the experience is not based on how we feel. The customer experience is actually how the customer feels after they have completed their transaction or their interaction with us. So Mr. Janine's words essentially caution us against becoming overly focused on immediate monetary returns because the true reward really is by our delivering these customer experiences, these extraordinary customer experiences, then those people who buy from us or who have an interaction with us will go ahead and share us, tell others about us. And so the the rewards are enhanced because then they will share with their friends and their, their relatives. And so this helps to grow our business as these people come to us without, without us actually having to do any advertising. 
So this is, it's very simple, but it's not easy. So what I'm going to share with you today, and let's talk about it today, five principles to enrich that customer experience and bolster relationships. So number one is to embrace active listening. Not just hearing, but listening, truly listen to your customers, encourage feedback and open channels of communication so that there's dialogue wherever possible. These can be done through surveys. They can be done on, in opinion polls, um, through emails, asking them questions. Wherever we get an opportunity, through phone calls, we can pick up the phone and call our customers, depending on the size of our business. These communication channels and these conversations will give us great in insights on whether or not we need to improve our offerings and tailor our services. Because let's face it, we are often so close to our business that we don't recognize what the gaps are. And studies, lots of research have been done that companies who implement that complements, com, excuse me, companies that implement customer feedback have a higher customer retention rate. Because truly, when we recognize that the feedback they have given us, it's valid and we implement these and we let them know that we have implemented them, then that fosters a greater connection. The emotional connection is built. And those customers will recognize that we truly appreciate them and they will be invested. They will feel invested in our business. So let's go to point number two, and that is to be responsive. We want to be responsive. We want to ensure prompt communication. When we do this, we're telling our customers essentially that we value them. We value them as individuals, not just as dollar signs on our budget sheet. sheet. And then we're also um, showing them that we respect their time. This can have a profound effect on their customer satisfaction. And according to a survey done by HubSpot, 82% of costs, cost excuse me, consumers say that they expect immediate responses to sales or marketing questions. So again, as business owners, we have to stay on top of this. There was a time when 24 hours was acceptable, not anymore. Number three, we're three, go above and beyond. Extraordinary service often lies in the little things. Small acts of kindness can cultivate customer loyalty. You know, Tony Robbins often says the secret to living is giving. So just a small act of kindness, a handwritten card, a plant uh, for, for a customer who is not well, uh, just a, just a gift, of, gift of a plant, a simple, maybe it's a book, maybe it's a planner, it doesn't have to, some, for some people, just getting a Starbucks gift card for five or $10, all those things mean a lot because it shows that we, as the business owner, we took that time. We thought about them even when they were not buying something from us. And we took the time to obtain whatever it is we are sending to them and then to send it off to them. So yes, email is good for that, for staying in touch but we want to just do a little more, right? And we call that the extra mile and not many people are walking that extra mile to deliver extraordinary customer service. So when we do this, we stand out in the eyes of our customers. Then number four, I believe it is four, <laughs> we want to prioritize personalization. Again, this, this helps them to feel valued or customers to feel valued. And this goes beyond just using their name in an email. We, what we want to try to do is get to know our customers, their preferences, their needs, and their wants. And a 2017 segment report which surveyed 1,006 Americans 18 and older revealed that 
49% said they bought a product after a personalized recommendation, even though they didn't initially plan to do so. And then 40% said that they purchased something more expensive than they originally intended due to the personalized experience. And most of us have shopped on Amazon. We know Amazon is a great example of a company that's doing this effectively. You buy one thing, they maintain your records, and they suggest to you what may be something that you might be interested in. You look at books and you get notifications of book recommendations. So what can we do in our business? What sort of system do we have? Do we have a CRM to determine what our customers bought? What do we talk about? What are, what are new products that you may have or new services that could enhance their lives so that you can recommend these to them? And the final point, point number five, is to be transparent. Transparency and honesty go together. In this digital age of, of digital commerce, there's a lack of trust on the part of many people. So when we are transparent in our actions, interactions, that builds trust. And even when things go wrong, but our customers recognize that we are being open and honest. We're not hiding behind blame, but we're letting them know that we recognize that there's something wrong and we're willing to fix it. Then even though they may not be very happy, they will appreciate that they're being on that we're being honest with them. And they will also appreciate that we fixed the problem. It's like David Porter says that customers don't expect us to be perfect, but they expect us to fix whatever goes wrong when something goes wrong. So the again, these five uh, principles may seem to be very simple. But let me re review them. It's to embrace active listening. Show that we are really listening. We understand what is not being said. We understand their concerns. We are empathetic. Uh, we put ourselves in their shoes and understand why they're not pleased and what can we do about it. Then we want to be responsive. Have systems in place so when they reach our customers reach out to us, we can respond to them in a short time. Then number three is that we want to go above and beyond. Go the extra mile to make our customers happy. That will encourage lo customer loyalty and retention. We want to personalize, uh, prioritize personalization. In other words, get to know our customers beyond just knowing their name on a book. Get to know what they like. What are their preferences so that when new products come on hand or new services, we can recommend these, not be just from a point of view of selling, but we want to help to make their life easier. And then the final point is to be transparent and honest with our customers. That being transparent, being honest, those two things will help to build uh, trust. And if our customers trust us, then they're going to want to continue doing business with us. So I encourage you, as a fellow business owner, or even if you're a customer listening to this, that, and you may eventually have your customers, don't be fooled by these five principles that they seem too easy. They can make a huge difference in your business. And by focusing on positive customer experiences and building strong relationships, we all can pave the way for sustained business success. I am Yvonne A. Jones of 50andwisercoaching.com. Thank you for watching and listening, and I will speak with you again soon.